Hey everybody, this is Clint Louie coming to us with five minutes from friendship. Have courage, have courage. It takes courage to live for Christ. You and I, we're, as Christians, we're like pilgrims on the King's Highway traveling to the celestial city. And on the King's Highway, along the way, there's giants, there's devils, there's temptations, there's pitfalls, there's traps, there's detours. The dangers are, are everywhere and innumerable, and it takes courage to face them in the name of the Lord. It takes courage for you and I to live for Christ. It takes courage to say no to this world. It takes courage to tell your children no to the wrong friends, no to the wrong influences, no to the wrong choices. It takes courage to say, I will stand for my family. I will stand for my church family. I will stand for the truth of God's word. I will not bow. I will not yield to the ungodliness and the immorality and the evils of my day. But I will take my stand with dependence on the Lord and for the cause of Christ. It takes courage. David said in Psalm 144 verse 1, Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. You know something, you and I, we need God to teach our fingers to fight the good fight, the good fight, the good fight of faith. Because you know, the devil is building strongholds. He is tearing down he is tearing down the ancient landmarks of godliness. He's building strongholds in your family and in your children and in your church. He's building strongholds throughout America. And we need men and women of courage who believe the name of Jesus Christ and are willing to be called unloving, who are willing to be called judgmental, who are willing to be called intolerant, bigoted, and on the list goes. But have courage, have courage. There's a man in the church, he told me some time ago, he said, the Lord backs me up. I love that statement. The Lord backs me up. Now, when he said that, he did not mean like some of us may dare think, I get to live as I please, selfishly, in my own sinfulness, my own habits, and what I want goes. No, no, that's not what he meant. He meant he has chosen the Lord's way. He has chosen to walk by scripture. He has chosen to walk the straight and narrow path in the name of Jesus. And on the King's Highway, the Lord backs him up. I want courage. I want courage. You pray for me to have some courage. And I pray that God would bless us all today. Oh, may the Lord bless you today with courage. There's a story about a man named Hugh Latimer. He died in 1555. He was martyred. Hugh Latimer lived and preached while King Henry VIII was on the throne. Everybody knows that King Henry VIII had appetite for women, a man of lust, desire, sensual. On New Year's, on one occasion on New Year's Day, around New Year's, the custom was to send a gift to the king. Well, Latimer sent him a gift, or instead of a gift, he sent him a New Testament. And he had a page turned down in the New Testament to a, to a place where the scripture says, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And he sent that to the king. Talk about courage. Came an occasion where Latimer was preaching and King Henry VIII was in the congregation. He preached right in front of the king. And the story goes that his sermon highly offended the king because Latimer was a very forthright, bold-hearted man. He just spoke plainly. And his message offended the king. And, you know, people, everybody thought, well, Latimer's going to die. He's going to be executed. He's incurred the wrath of the king. Well, a message was sent to Latimer saying the king wanted to hear him preach again. And the next time that he came, he wanted, the, he wanted Latimer to make an apology, public apology. So the next service came. King Henry VIII was there and Latimer got up. And Latimer, the story says, Latimer made some comments that said he knew he was preaching in front of King Henry VIII but he recognized even more that it was God who sent him on this holy errand. It was God who sent him with this message. And so he must give fear to God rather and please God rather than try to please the king. And so 
Latimer turned around and started preaching and he preached the exact same message that offended the king the first time. And it says the second time Latimer preached it, he preached it with more boldness, with more passion, with more enthusiasm and energy than he had the first time. And oh my, the king's court all said, Latimer's a dead man. He's, he's dead. Well, the king called him and with a stern look, asked him how dare he speak in such a way. And Latimer humbled himself, got down on his knees before the king, not, not out of fear to the king, but in reverence and said to the king, he said that he was constrained. He had to speak such a way because his duty is to God. And it was because of conscience that he had to speak. And he had cleared his conscience by speaking in the way that he did. The king rose up, took Latimer by the hand, hugged him and said this, blessed be God, I have so honest a servant. Latimer had courage. I want to say to you and me, we must also have courage.